All right, so we're going to talk about Graham's law of effusion and we've done practice questions here. Yeah? Okay, before we get to look at Graham's law of effusion, I have to understand exactly what effusion is. So the rate at which the gas molecules get to escape a container through a tiny O is basically what we call effusion. So if you have a container filled with a gas and then you get to to make a tiny O, so that process by which the gas molecules are going to be escaping the rate at which they are going to be moving out of the container is what we are calling effusion. Okay, so don't confuse effusion to, to diffusion. Okay, Diffusion is a movement of gas particles from the region of their higher concentration to the region of uh, their, their lower concentration. Okay, so Graham's law of effusion tells us to say that if you are comparing the rate of a fusion of a gas against its smaller mass you observe that in a case where you get to reduce the molar mass the rate gets to do what gets to increase in a case where you get to reduce or rather increase the molar mass the rate gets to do what gets to reduce so there is inversely proportionality between the two but of course, in terms of an equation, we get to see that if you are comparing two rates of effusion of two gases, you observe that the rate of effusion of a gas is inversely proportional to the square root of its smaller mass. And that's where this equation comes from. But exactly, that's exactly what Graham's law of effusion states. The rate of effusion of a gas is in this proportion to the square root of its smaller mass. So that is, if that is the rate of a certain gas, let's say hydrogen, its smaller mass should be on the bottom in terms of a square root. Okay. All right. So the comp uh, this square root that we have can be written as this single one, as two of them, actually. I think that would even, in case you, you don't understand exactly what we've shown there. So understanding that they are separate like that makes us see that, okay, there's inverse proportionality between its rate and also its square root of its smaller mass. But of course, mathematically, using one square root as a division is the same as showing them individually like that. So we'll go for this. Now, with that understanding, we are now ready to look at some practice questions in regards to this. Question one. So, we've been given the moles of an identified gaseous substance, which effuses through a tiny O in 86.9 seconds under identical conditions. We also have another gas, argon, given number of moles and also a time gets to effuse through the same or the container. So I'll consider the unidentified gas to be our rate one. So looking at the rate, we can express it in terms of moles per second. So we've been given the number of moles and then we've been given the time. So we can basically divide 0 0.008278 divided by 86.9. For the unidentified gas. So the rate is 9.52589 by 10 to the power minus 6 moles per second. And then for the argon gas, that's its number of moles, that's the time it takes. So we we'll consider that to be rate 2. We can also get to divide that. So 0 0.000 1740 divided by 81.3 so we have 2.14 by 10 to the power minus 6 so that is also more per watt per second so we found the rate of both the unidentified gas and also the argon by looking at the information given in the question okay so that just ends as a statement so this is part of the question that is remaining here. So the question was supposed to be, what is the molar mass of an identified substance? Notice that the fact that they've mentioned argon, we are able to check our periodic table and check for its smaller mass. So 
the molar mass is 39.95, something like that. So approximately we'll take it to be 40 grams per mole. Okay, and then here the molar mass is it's an identified gas, so there's no way we can check for its molar mass. So we don't know. So that's what the question was supposed to be. I don't know if I forgot to input that there. So we're trying to find the molar mass of the unidentified gaseous substance. So we'd have to identify it after determining the, its molar mass. Okay. So at this point, going back to our equation, which is uh, the, the Graham's law of effusion, we've seen that the rate is like that. And then on the right hand side, we've got the square root, right? of the molar masses and of, of course we've noted that they're inversely proportion so our rate for the first one is 9.52589 by 10 to the power minus 6 moles per second over the one for argon which is 2.14 by 10 to the power minus 6 moles per watt per second so we understand that they're inversely proportional so on the right hand side they're supposed to be on the opposite parts so understanding that our argon is on the bottom we expect this smaller mass to be on top so it will be 40 grams per mole divided by so when identified gas, we use letter X to denote a smaller mass. So we are in this proportion. That's why we are putting them opposite. The square root of its smaller mass is in this proportion to the rate of the fusion. That's what Graham's law tells us. So we can now apply our math to simplify the, the equation. So that can divide. And then this can also divide. So... The other thing we can do is we can square both sides so that the square root can disappear on the right hand side. So we know the square root and the square are actually uh, inverses. Okay, so we can reverse the square root by squaring. So 9.52589 divided by 2.14 and then squared. I'm getting a value of. 19.81452 equal to we are remaining with 40 grams over x of course that is grams per mole so our goal is to find the value of x so we can just close that multiply and then of course we we'll have x appearing on on the left hand side so we divide by 19 both sides. So the value of x that I'm getting is 2.0187 grams per mole. So what is our molar mass of unidentified gas? So the only gas that is able to give us that is hydrogen gas. We understand hydrogen gas exists atomically. So it is 2 times 1.008. It's the only value that is closer to that. Okay? So, which is approximately 2.016. Okay. So, that's the only value closer to that. So, that's basically how you get to look at that question. Now, when you look at question 2, we are told... If equal amounts <coughs> Okay, question two. So if equal amounts of helium and argon are placed in a polar container and allowed to escape, which gas will escape faster and how much faster? So we're comparing Ilium and Argon. So from the previous question, we know Argon approximately say the smaller mass is 40 grams per mole. And then for for Ilium, which is like the second element on the predictable after hydrogen, 
approximately its uh, its smaller mass is four grams per mole. Now, looking at which gas we escape faster, we are looking at comparing them. Okay, so we're looking at comparing them. So when we get to compare the two, <laughs> you check your rate one, your rate two is equal to. Now consider rate one to be for argon. So that we can have argon on the bottom, 40, and then for helium to be four. So rate one, so I've used derivative 4 and 40 so that we can have a common ratio there. So 4 into 4 it's 1, into 40 it's 10. Okay, so from onset we said the top part is representing argon. Okay, so also we had put the 40 grams on the bottom according to Graham's law. Okay, so now when it comes to the issue of looking at ratios, it becomes a bit unique when it comes to the final answer. We know from Graham's law to say the one that is lighter is supposed to effuse faster. So in this case, we expect helium to effuse faster. So there will be direct relationship from there. Okay. So what am I trying to say? So distribute the square root. The square root of 1 is just the 1. And then the square root of 10 on the bottom is basically going to be a 3.16 rounded off to two decimal places. Okay, 3.16. So the one that is smaller, the length that is smaller, is basically going to apply for argon, which is heavier. And then the one smaller, the one the bigger one is actually going to apply for helium, which was lighter. Okay? Remember these were just ratios, not exactly molar masses. So there's a bit of some exception there. So in this case, we are trying to say Helium is going to diffuse or effuse 3.16 faster than what? Than argon. That's exactly how you get to approach this question. Okay, so we are on the third question now. What is the rate of effusion for a gas that has a molar mass twice that of a gas that effuses at the rate of 4.2 mol per minute? So this gas effuses at the rate of 4.2 mol per minute. Now, we need to find the fusion of another gas that has a molar mass twice of this one, which effuses at 4.2 mol per minute. That's what the question is asking us to do. So, say that the rate 1 be equal to 4.2 mol per minute, as we've been told. Now, say its molar mass, let it be equal to a 1. So, if we are saying want to find the rate of another gas, which is twice the molar mass of this one. So we'll say we don't know its rate, that's what we're trying to find, but since we are saying its molar mass is twice of the other, we we'll put it, so it will be two. One times two is two. This is twice, okay, that of this gas effusing at 4.2 more per minute. Going back to Graham's law of effusion, we are saying that R1 divided by R2 is equal to the square root of, so we expect that we are supposed to be in this proportion, so we'll have it like that. So for R1, we have 4.2. R2, we don't know, and then equal to so I don't know I've put one there, it's supposed to be molar one. So molar mass of, so on top there we have got that gas, okay, of given rate. So we expect it to be on the bottom. So we said this molar mass is a one. And then the one that is twice is the two, which is of the X on the bottom, since they're supposed to be opposite. I believe by now we've taken note of that, we've seen the way the, the trend. So 4.2 is equal to 2 divided by 1 is just a 2. So we remain with a square root of 2. Now we are still dividing by x. So we can multiply by x on both sides. So that the x will only appear on the, on the other side. 
here they will divide. So we have 4.2 being equal to root of 2x. So you can divide by root of 2 both sides. So our value of x is going to be 4.2 divided by the root of 2. So the rate that I'm getting of that guys is 2.9 moles per what? Per minute. Okay, so that's exactly what we've seen. So we've seen like it's almost, if you basically get to compare them, it's almost in the ratio of, it's almost twice, right? So it's almost half of the original one. So we are seeing that in a case where we've increased the molar mass, the rate has what? Reduced, which basically explains Graham's law of effusion. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you now understand what effusion is and how you get to apply Graham's law of effusion to perform calculations.